uh, you might have attached a talk from Armin, uh, just um, that it is a developer of this feature. Uh, he has spoke over uh, core aspects. Um, I, I had yesterday I had a talk where I uh, show how to use multicolor gradients in macros. And uh, in this talk, I will present you aspects of the file format. Uh, <coughs> LibreOffice 7.6 has uh, three new gradients in the uh, standard palette. Uh, these are multi gradients. Uh, the background here in the slide is one of them. It is a gradient sundown. You see that it has at least uh, three colors, an orange, a pink, and a blue. Uh, for those who have not noticed these new gradients, let us have a short look at them. Uh, this is the, <coughs> the dialogue in question. It has a preview on the right side. Here was a gradient rainbow. In the options section, in the center part, you can change the geometry of the gradient and its start and end color. In the gradient section on the left side, you can manage the gradients. And then you find the three new multicolor gradients, the rainbow, sunrise, and sundown. Uh, these um, gradients were um, designed by Heiko. Um, this slide shows some changes to the geometry of the gradient rainbow. You can change, for example, the type to linear or rectangular. You can move the center or rotate the gradient. And this slide shows changing start and end color. The left rectangle has the original gradient sunrise. The other examples have changed start or end color. Comparing the results, you see that there are intermediate colors, yeah, which are the same in all four variants. You cannot change them in the UI. Hopefully, we have an extended user interface at the next year's conference. And now, let's go forward to the file format. First, we look how a gradient is saved in the first place. You see here a shape with a, um, using a gradient from red to green. Uh, we start with a markup for the object itself. It contains uh, the geometry of the object as well as its size and position. And furthermore, it has a reference to the style of the object. The style contains information, uh, among other things, about line and area flow and its graphic properties. In this example, there is a property of a film with a value gradient. But, however, the gradient itself is not included in the style, only a reference to it. It is only in the gradient definition that we find the geometry of the gradient and its colors. Uh, similar for a transparency gradient. In this example, the mirrored heller shape has a gradient in transparency. Uh, the style contains a reference to the definition of the uh, transparency gra gradient. Only if such reference is present, then a gradient is used. Otherwise, you can ha uh, only have a solid uh, transparency. Um, and that is the definition of the uh, transparency gradient. A special property of a transparency gradient in terms of file format is that it is not the transparency that is saved, but the opposite, the opacity. So in the mirror teller shape, the transparency starts at 10%, 
which is here, uh, 90%, and increases downwards to 100%, which is 0% uh, opacity. Um, defining a color transition is the essential part of a multicolor gradient. Um, we look at such a color transition. Uh, you can describe it by its colors and the relative position of these colors in the total transition range. Uh, the relative position is called an offset. Uh, that way, the definition of the color transition is independent from any shape which uses this gradient. All three example shapes use the same color transition. Um, to get multicolor gradients, we need a new way to describe color transitions. In LibreOffice 7.5, you can only set start uh, color and end color. Uh, when developing a new feature, you look, of course, how such feature is handled in other five formats. In the first approach, it was considered to add only the new intermediate colors to the already existing uh, colors for start and end. You can see such a solution in uh, VML. At the same time, when Armin was working on multicolor gradients, uh, Thomas developed the theme colors feature that uses color definitions that go beyond simple RGB uh, color values. In the future, this must also be available for a start and end color in a multicolor gradient. Uh, therefore, we uh, try to make it um, future oriented and uh, the file format is now designed so uh, that not only the intermediate colors, but also the start and end colors are described in a new way. There exist several approaches to describe a color transition. For example, oops, that was a wrong tip. Uh, for example, you can uh, use a um, parallel sequence of colors and of offset values. A such approach you can see in uh, GDI and in, in SCIA. Another approach is to co combine this two into a, a sequence of pairs. Uh, that is what you find in, in CSS and in uh, VML. And a third ap approach is uh, to make not a sequence, but put each color offset pair in an element. That is done by OXML and SVG. Here is an example for the markup, which is used in the uh, transparency uh, gradient. Uh, the gray parts are mm, they're already there, and you are the colored parts. Um, that is the actual way we use it in uh, 7.6. Uh, Notice that we go with the element approach. The element has an offset and a value. Uh, such element is called a stop. Uh, the new element is not a yet available in ODF, and so you need to save it in ODF extended. And the element has a private prefix uh, alloc extended. This slide shows a color gradient definition. Here we use the element approach two. Uh, the new elements contain a color type attribute, such allows to describe other color definitions later on. At the moment, the type value is always RGB. The color itself is specified, in this case, 
as an hexadecimal RGB value. Uh, later, however, the type could be a theme, and the color value could be a theme color and a name, for example. The decision to use a gradient stop element in contrast to a string attribute or a sequence also has the advantage that child elements are possible. Such child elements are needed later for color transformations like uh, darken and lighten, which are, or tint or shade uh, in the other words, uh, which are included too in uh, Thomas' uh, theme color feature. Uh, when we compare our solution um, with the OXML, uh, then it uh, shows that um, the chosen concept fits well to that standard. I have marked the corresponding parts with the same uh, color. Um, the value for the offset is um, 10 thousandths as unit for the position in OXML, and we have values uh, between 0 and 1, but it's not essential. And when you compare it with SVG, uh, you see again a good fit to it. We have uh, offsets same as SVG. Uh, SVG has some ways to um, define a color. I have he now here uh, used uh, its uh, RGB uh, function that fits uh, quite good. And as you see, the color is. Um, we have hexadecimal, and in the example of SVG, there are uh, decimal values, but that's only a, a conversion. So now let us go forward to multicolor gradients. As is, uh, shown examples, all have only start and end color. But you uh, can probably already imagine how to add more colors. We simply use more than two of these new elements. This is done in the next example. On the left side, uh, you see uh, the shape with a um, transition from red to green, you have already seen. And I have added uh, a third um, of these elements. Uh, you can uh, edit the file markup to get such multicolor gradient. It's very easy. Uh, you use the existing elements as a template, copy and paste such an element, change the numerical value of offset and the hexadecimal color of the uh, value of the color. Uh, when you edit the markup, that was too fast. Uh, when you add, edit the markup, uh, make sure that the offset values are always between zero and one and that the stop elements are arranged in increasing uh, offset values. Okay, let's go forward. In the previous example, the first color has the offset value 0, and the last color has the offset value 1. This is not necessary. If another value is used, the first color is is extended to zero, and the last color is continued to one. Uh, this way, you can get areas of constant color at the beginning and end. Uh, you may wonder where the values dot four, dot five, and dot six used in the markup can be found in the drawing. For this, we have to look at the complete color gradient. In the example of the slide, the gradient is based on this uh, shown square. And the uh, color transition range goes from the corner of the, uh, to the center. So you will see the values dot 4, dot 5, and dot 6. 
when you now have added such uh, gradient, you, uh, you open the document and you save it and look again at the uh, markup in the file, you will notice that it has changed. Uh, in ODF, a gradient also has a draw border property. Uh, this is called uh, transition start in the current user interface. Uh, what we uh, do is this. If a gradient originally has a 0% border and the first gradient stop is not at offset 0, but for example at uh, dot fa uh, 4, then this is converted to a border when saving. Uh, this is done to have a better backward uh, compatibility. When you use a border uh, other than 0%, this uh, compatibility uh, change will not be applied. We'll look at another example. In this flag, we have a background fill with uh, three colors. However, the transitions are hard and not gradients. How was this achieved? The solution is simple. At a color change, two gradient stops with identical offset are defined. The first was the col uh, color value of the preceding segment. Uh, the second was the uh, color value of the following segment. Uh, such hard uh, transition is also possible with uh, transparent uh, gradients. In this example, it was used to create a hole in the otherwise solid color area fill. I have placed an image behind the shape so that you can see the transparency. Uh, notice the two stops with offset uh, zero. The first with opacity one and the second with opacity uh, zero. That is a hard transition. But although the first stop is at offset zero, the shape has a large area with solid uh, color. This is designed by using uh, the old uh, border property. Okay. Uh, now let us have a look at the uh, gradient palette. Uh, the new file markup is reflected in the color gradient palette. Uh, for transparency, uh, there exists no palette. If you use a transparency gradient in several uh, documents, uh, you should create an example shape and drag it into the gallery. Uh, if you even not need the shape itself, you can uh, say, uh, insert it uh, temporarily and copy the transparency uh, gradient with a brush tool. Or you create a document template which has uh, the definition of the opacity gradient and the style which re re references it. Uh, the gradient palette is stored in the uh, share folder in the LibreOffice installation. When you add or modify button and use the buttons on the, uh, the first time, a copy of this file is stored in the config folder of your user profile. If you add a gradient, this new gradient is available in the dialog, the uh, same as the predefined ones. Uh, we look now how the gradient uh, is stored in the palette file. I use the gradient sunrise um, for example. Uh, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot to read, but this uh, gradient definition in the palette is the same as the definition in the file markup. Uh, thus, what you have learned about the file markup, you can use directly for the gradient palette. This uh, standard uh, SOG uh, file can be added with a simple editor. 
However, I recommend to use an XML editor which can validate that the markup is well formed. That way a missing bracket or quotation mark will be detected. Notice here again the increasing offset values from 0, 0.5, and 1. And notice that the color of the first stop is copied to the old start uh, color and the color of the last stop and the color of the uh, the last stop is uh, copied to the end color. The implementation is so that uh, the new elements are the primary elements and uh, will determine the start and end color. But when you uh, come to edit uh, the file format or use macros, uh, you should make sure that start and end color has uh, the correct volume. Okay, let's sum up a little bit. Uh, the color stops of a multicolor gradient are given in a gradient stop element. For transparency gradient, you use opacity stop elements. The offset values must be in range from 0 to 1. Stop elements must be ordered in regard to the offset. Two stops with same offset are allowed that produces a hard transition. The legacy start and end color attributes must have the same values as the first stop and last stop respectively. And you can edit both file markup or gradient palette as well. Oh, now let's move on to question and answers. Any, any questions for Kavina? Kavina, thanks so much for that very um, um, very extended um, talk here and all the background information. I was wondering what's the story in the uh, we get to see um, um, the uh, extended um, extended model. Um, in the start, I have talked with the ODF DC uh, how we can uh, integrate, uh, integrate it. And there was a um, meaning that we do not need um, a lot of new um, uh, type values. For example, um, Microsoft Office has um, uh, HSL as, uh, as volume because that are um, uh, essentially uh, RGB values. You can uh, transform that. Uh, but um, you need, of course, a way to describe uh, the, uh, a way to describe the um, theme colors, and they are not uh, given by an uh, R uh, RGB value. They are described other ways, and uh, Microsoft has uh, some other um, um, types which are not directly um, RGB values. And uh, I have not seen a um, principal um, um, Bedenken. Um, there was no strong uh, against uh, adding such a type value. And uh, I think the, the way it is currently done uh, is, um, I have written some, uh, some text already, uh, but uh, that was in, in the spring and then come the implementation, uh, so that it will um, surely not be in uh, ODF 1.4. And uh, it depends how many uh, people will work in the ODFTC 
and uh, how many time I have, uh, whether we can get it in the order of 1.5. May I ask a question? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I saw that there is some redundancy in the definition. There is a all variable structure, start variable, or all variable, and then there is one and zero. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be reasonable to get rid of one and zero and don't have the convenience of uh, where this added? To uh, what value um, do you uh, suggest? So, so there could be a start value as before, end value as before, and we immediately put uh, uh, 0.3, uh, 0.5, but no, the 0, 0, and 1, 0. Just to avoid the predicted values. Um, that's uh, what uh, is possible in, in VML, yes. Um, normally, in, we make not uh, such a shortened uh, tricks uh, in ODF. We try to keep uh, the ODF uh, go, good uh, human readable. Still have a couple of minutes to make questions. Can I just comment about this? Uh, we can this to zero and uh, one, we, we could uh, change it for this part four and then so this is your problem. I think that. Uh, Probably nice that we have like this new way, then we can define like this is the new way, which we can just define this like zero one and it's like for the backwards and the Okay, thanks again. Yes, sir.